So this video is your ultimate airdrop guide. We're going to teach you how to use your airdrop to transfer files between your iPhone, your iPad and your Mac. By the end of it, you're going to be an airdrop master. Let the download begin. So if you're finding the channel for the first time, here we do support videos that teach you how to use the devices you currently own, as well as troubleshooting some of the biggest issues those devices may have. If you enjoy videos like that, join your support movement by hitting that subscribe button down below, sharing your thoughts, comments, and any questions you have down below. And while you're at it, share the video out because you never know who it can help. Let's get started using AirDrop. So you have an iPhone, an iPad, or a MacBook and you want to transfer some pictures, files, videos, music, whatever. You want to share it between either your devices or your contacts and you're not quite sure how to do that. AirDrop is definitely here to help. AirDrop is probably the quickest and easiest ways to transfer anything between this Apple ecosystem that you're in. It's probably one of the best parts of the Apple ecosystem altogether. And it's something it has above things like Android or even the Windows system is that everything talks to each other really easily and it makes it so simple to transfer anything you want to different Apple devices. So we're going to show you exactly how to do that in this video. Now definitely make sure you stick around to the end of the video because we're going to show you an easy way to secure your airdrop in case you don't want it active either on your phone or on the phone of a minor or a child. We're going to show you how to put some restrictions on airdrop to make sure that it's secured after we show you exactly how to use it. So one of the first things that we will take a look at is how to turn on AirDrop on your two mobile devices. So either your iPad or your iPhone. Now remember the way that AirDrop works is it works with Bluetooth connectivity. It uses the Bluetooth in your devices to find and establish a connection. And then it uses the Wi-Fi in your devices to transfer the data between those two devices. So it doesn't necessarily mean that your devices have to be connected to a specific Wi-Fi. It just needs to have Wi-Fi enabled so the transfer can take place and it needs to have Bluetooth enabled so the two devices can talk to each other and connect properly. So now the quickest way to make sure your device is ready, capable and enabled for AirDrop is to go into your Action Center and the Action Center you can swipe down from the top, access that Action Center really quickly. In that Action Center you have your connections area on the top and in that connections area you're going to have your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth and your airdrop. Now, if you don't see it to begin with, you can kind of hard press on that connection center and it'll bring up the rest of the options that are available there. You may not see it right out of the bat. You probably have to hard press and get into the menu and actually see it. Once you're inside, just go ahead and tap on Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and also tap on the airdrop symbol at the bottom. It's that symbol that looks like a triangle with a bunch of stuff radiating from the top of it. Now, once you tap on the airdrop symbol, you're going to get a couple of options. So you can either have the receiving to be turned off, which means this device won't accept any kind of airdrop anything coming into it you can do it to contacts only and the way that contacts only works is that both you and the person that you want to send something to in your contacts have to be signed into an Apple account so they both have to be signed into an iCloud account and you both have to have airdrop enabled and be in close vicinity of each other again because this is almost like a local transfer you want to make sure the devices are as close as possible so the device can talk to each other and access and make that transfer. Now, the other easiest way to do it is if you're just transferring one or two things really quickly, you can turn on the everybody option. And that means anyone's able to airdrop into that particular device. Now you want to be careful not to leave this on because it actually does just leave it open for anyone to airdrop anything into your phone. So if you're walking around with your airdrop on set to everybody, it's open to the world. That's something you definitely don't want for security purposes. So if you're going to be using that option, make sure to turn it off afterwards. Now, airdropping something from your iPhone, iPad is actually really simple. Once airdrop is enabled, again, make sure airdrop is enabled on both devices, the one that you're transferring to and the one that you're transferring from. The one that you're transferring from, you just want to select that file, picture, video, whatever you want to select, hit that share button or share option in that particular menu. And then you're going to get the option to share it a couple of different ways. If you look on the bar, you're going to see 
airdrop as an option to share it. If you select that airdrop option, it'll begin the process of looking for anything that's close by or looking for anything that you are connected to. And then it'll present those airdrop options for you, for you to select. And once you've selected that airdrop option, it'll go ahead and connect to that other device prompt that other device to accept the airdrop that's coming in and your file is transferred over. So it actually makes it that simple and easy. It's as simple as it sounds. Again, a big part of why the Apple ecosystem is such a great thing. Now, as I said before, you can also airdrop either to or from your Mac as well. And to launch airdrop in Mac is also pretty simple. You wanna go into Finder, on the sidebar in Finder, you're gonna have an airdrop option. If you go into that airdrop option, you're gonna see two settings at the bottom. The first setting is similar to what you would find in the phone. It's gonna give you the ability to set up the airdrop the kind of the way you want. Do you wanna share it with just your contacts? Do you wanna share it with everyone? Or do you wanna share it with no one? Those options are available there. And then you also have the option to search for older Macs if it's not popping up automatically. So now once airdrop is enabled in that menu, you're gonna see all the devices that are connected to airdrop and the devices that you have the ability to airdrop files and things to. And then the rest is really just simple. You can select the file that you want and drag it over into the airdrop folder and then share it with, with any of those devices that you're choosing to send that file to. Now, when you're dragging the file over to the folder, since either you're using your mouse or your trackpad, you're hard pressing on that file and dragging it over. You can then click again while you're still pressing or holding the trackpad down to get into that airdrop folder. And then you would basically just select the device that you wanna transfer it into at that point. Now, because options is always a great thing, of course, there's more than one way to share your file when you're in your Mac. You actually have two additional options. So if you just right click on that file, you have the share option there, and you also have the same kind of share option you'll see in your iPhone or iPad on the top of your menu bar. So if you click on the particular thing that you wanna share, you go up to the top of the menu bar, you click the share option there. It's the same thing because you're sharing it to the airdrop system that way as well. And the cool thing about that is when you bring up that shared menu, it'll still give you an option of whatever device you wanna share it to that pops up in your airdrop. So you're not losing anything by sharing it in any of these other ways. It's just different options that are available, whichever way is quicker for you, whichever way is easy for you. That's the way you should definitely choose to go with. So now as promised, if you have a device that you don't want AirDrop to be enabled in at all, and I mean not being able to turn it on at all, because you do have the option to not share to anyone. If you go into the settings again and just select not shared, then that's definitely an option. But if you have a child or somebody that you don't want AirDrop to be enabled, on their device, you can actually disable AirDrop through the restrictions on the phone itself. So the way you access restrictions on the iPhone is you're gonna go into your settings, and believe it or not, you're gonna go into screen time. And when you hit screen time, it's gonna ask you, is this your iPhone or is this your child's iPhone? And then you make that selection. Once you make that selection, a whole bunch of menus are gonna appear for you that you can restrict. And one of those options is restrict applications. And in those applications is the AirDrop application itself. And if you turn off the restriction to the airdrop application in this section, you won't be able to enable airdrop on that particular device. So it gives you the ability to kind of control it at the root. So if you disable it through this restrictions, you can't re-enable it through the actual OS of the iPhone or iPad itself. It's a really good way for you to monitor what can be done with the iPhone. And you can also poke through this restriction section and start formatting the phone the way you want to. It's a way for you to do some kind of parental controls on phones that need parental control. So get to know the device. It definitely does help. You want to make sure that you're putting the proper restrictions on the phones to the best of your ability. So if you guys have any questions about AirDrop, please go ahead and share those in the comment section down below this video. If you have any tips about AirDrop that I didn't share in this video, go ahead and share them in the comment section as well. I'm sure the community would love to hear them. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. If you enjoyed the video, join our user support movement by hitting that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications so you know when we release a new support or information video. Until next time, guys.